It's useful. Aren't we double counting? The answer is no. We're not double counting. We are recognizing two very different assets. It's like having the fruit and the tree. They are separate things. If you give somebody the right to the tree, it's different to giving someone the right to uh, the fruit of the tree. And this is what the concept that leasing standard is trying to, to bring out. There is a right of use. You have it. You have this right of use. It's an asset. You are going to be generating future economic benefits from it. And on the same hand, because you have signed the contract, you have a contractual obligation to make those lease payments for five years. Now this is a big change. It's in its final stages. When it comes about, it's going to have massive implications. The lesser accounting, let's not talk about because there were mistakes in the previous exposure draft. They're going to try and fix it up. Right, so let's leave that for the time. But let's focus on the last thing. What this is, what's going to happen now if this exposure draft gets finalized? Leases are going to be on balance sheet. You're going to be having a massive gross up of your balance sheet. More assets, airlines are going to have aircraft on there. But with that aircraft, they're now also going to be having the liability of the lease. So there's going to be a grossing up of the balance sheet. Guess what's going to happen? Your ratios are going to change. You are going to be in breach of your covenants. Your debt equity ratios will change. And this is a big issue. The first people we spoke to about the leasing standard was not the leasing companies. We spoke to the banks first. We're saying, listen, if this thing comes out, please, when it comes out, have a look at your arrangements. People may be in breach of their covenants because a lot of these liabilities are going to be coming on, never mind the assets, on the balance sheet. Is the income statement going to change? Yes, the income statement will also change. You know what you're going to have now for the lessee? You now, instead of having operating lease expense being recognized over the five years, you would have had an asset up front. Which the, what you're going to do with that asset, you have to amortize that asset over five years. Where does amortization go? Below EBITDA. Then what you're going to do, you're going to have a liability. How, what happens with the liability? It's going to accrue interest. That cash payments you're making in the cash flow statement is not going to, is going to reduce the liability, but interest will still be charged. So guess what's going to happen? Yes, you're going to have more expenses up front, but your EBITDA will increase. Earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization because with leases now that what used to be lease expense which would go into earnings is now going into depreciation and interest. So your EBITDA will increase. There are also other complexities in that leasing standard. Currently the current version says if there is a contingency in your rental contract like for example you must give me a million rupees a month plus 5% of your turnover, what do we do with that 5% contingency currently under IS-17? Nothing. We wait for it to happen. Under the new leasing standard, anticipate what your turnover is going to be for the next five years and measure your liability accordingly. What that's going to do, it's going to create massive volatility in your income statement. Your estimates of revenue will change. They're currently thinking of ditching that idea because there's too much volatility. That is what's happening on the leasing side. I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, if you invite me next year, we'll talk about it if the standard is finalized. But that's where I want to leave leasing. All right. I've got slides. I'm not going to discuss, discuss that. Leasing is a reality. I'm saying at the moment there's another exposure draft we're expecting to come out by before December. If you have serious problems with it, I'll tell you what you do. Raise the technical issue with the ISB. They listen. They do listen. It, when the standard is issued then to complain, no use. Now you have an opportunity when the exposure draft is released. Now when, you, when the exposure draft is released in your comment letter, don't just put a big no. They want technical argument. Provide technical argument or provide regional argument. In Pakistan, this is the way our contracts work. Or this is our property law. How does this apply? 
Then they say, oh, we didn't think about that. And they will have a paragraph, a sentence in the standard to help. So take part in the process. Now I'm going to talk of a current issue. This is an important or interesting issue. I mean, I've been, I know it wasn't originally on the agenda. I beg, excuse me for that. But I've been asked to bring this topic onto the agenda. It seems like a simple, simple issue. <laughs> Whether my liability is current or non-current. Now, it seems like an easy issue, isn't it? The general principle for a liability to be current is if it's due to be settled in less than 12 months, it's a current liability. And if, it's, and if I don't have a conditional right to defer settlement for more than 12 months, then it's a current liability. But why am I discussing this topic? You know what? Let me tell you what. It's a very, very important issue to how you classify debt. You know what's been happening or what we've experienced in the last few years post-crisis? A lot of companies have been in breach of their covenants. Because a lot of companies have been in breach of their covenants, some of the debt has become current. And then afterwards they decide to fix it up. Is it still current? Is it not current? And what we would like you to do is, you know what, I mean, we're doing this, this, this section now. I appeal to all of you to go and look at your loan agreements, look at the covenants, and get the issues remedied before year end. And I'll tell you why it's important to do that. IS-1, requirements for classification are rule-based. Sorry. This is one IFRS where there's a lot of rules. And some of the rules, as I'm going to go through now, will seem to you to be counterintuitive. What we're going to do now is we're going to be looking at balance sheet, and we look at balance sheet circumstances. The way I look at a balance sheet, and I want you to also picture a balance sheet like this, a balance sheet is a snapshot, it's a photograph of a company at a specific point in time. So it's a snapshot. What does the photograph do? Even if your hands are up at that point in time, it will capture your hand up. So that is what a balance sheet is. It's a snapshot of your company at a specific point in time. The IS-1 rules on classification of debt will help you decide whether something is current or non-current. Let's look at the, let's go back to the basics. A liability is a current liability if you have to pay it in 12 months, isn't it? Or if something, if something is payable on demand or you cannot defer settlement for more than 12 months, then it is current. Let's look at case study one and let's see how you would approach this, right? <clears throat> case study one says, entity B is preparing its 31st December, let's call it 2010 financial statements. It has a five-year loan that is required to be settled in lump sum on 30th June. So normally, What's happening? This loan is due in six months' time. It would be now a current loan, isn't it? On 1st March, your year in is 31st December, right? But on 1st March, the day before the financial statements are authorized for issue, B signs a new five-year loan agreement. So in effect, they don't have to pay any more in June. Question. Must the whole of the loan be classified as current? Think about it. What's the answer here? It's still current. Who says it's still current? Fantastic. Because why? At balance sheet date, the reality was that it is current. Now the next thing that people answer is saying, wait a minute, there's a post-balance sheet event. Is that going to adjust my financials? It can't. Sorry. <laughs> it can't. The condition or the reality at balance sheet date is there. It's a current, it's a non-adjusting post balance sheet, de, balance sheet event. That's why I tell the client, if you want to do the renegotiation, do it on 31st December at 11.59. Don't do it on 31st March. All right. It's a non-adjusting event, but you know what I'll do? I will put so much information so that my user has to understand my ratios, how they actually are. You understand it. It's important. Your IFRS 7 maturity disclosures would be based on the balance sheet position. So you need to also adjust that. Let's look at an issue with covenants. This is the controversial one, right? When is something current and non-current? 
loan covenants exist. If there was a 